Hello and welcome back to the Dungeons and Dragons Podcast UK. My name is Yasmin and I will be the DM. Hi, my name's Colin and I play Cuin de Greymond, a paladin from Gavany. Hi, I'm Spencer. I play Caddo Chasseur, a cleric also from Gavany. Hi, I'm Brian and I play Ogvar Shawfoot, a ranger from Keswick. Hi, my name is Samantha and I play Elora Greyvale, a sorcerer from Nefalia. Accessing the private parlour presented no particular problems until Alora indicated a number of nearby enchantments that clearly required closer investigations. Taking their seats at a stone chess set produced a remarkably fortunate result, however it also presented an armoured adversary of alarmingly large proportions. Options for besting the shiny suit were openly discussed, and eventually it was decided that lashing its legs together was the most likely method for mitigating its march. When we left in episode 87, our heroes had found it hard to hide their shock, as the party tank had just taken one for the team. As he failed to tie the knot in time, it was no marriage made in heaven, and he was knocked bandy by a blooming big blade. It would appear that combat has finally cornered our companions, and as we pick up the action, we can only hope that someone will pick up our paladin. Episode 88, Window Wipeout. So, Kewin, you have just bent down to tie the suit of armour's legs together using your rope. But as you touch the armour, an involuntary brush of the hand it reanimates, bringing its sword up and hitting you in the chest, sending you flying backwards prone on the floor. <gasps> Kuin! You've all rolled initiative. Laura, you're first. Oh. You are stood in what, on the edge of the rug by the fireplace watching this happen as you see Kuin launched backwards. Oh my god, Kuin! What's she gonna do? Um, she's gonna flash. Her wand. <laughs> it's going to go that way this week, is it? Okay. She's going to grab the wand and wave the wand of whole person at the inanimate object, which is now animate, at the suit of armour, out of desperation. Shock. Okay. You wave the wand. Nothing happens. The arm is still shifting and moving these kind of slight... Almost, you would say, breathing movements. You see the shoulders and the chest plate rise ever so slightly in a very rhythmical motion. Almost like this, uh, this heartbeat, this, this constant, even movement. You waste a charge on your wand. She's, and nothing happens. She's just going to... Just... <laughs> flick the wand. Not casting, but flick it like, oh, it's broken. And then out of desperation, the only other thing she's going to do at this point, um, she's frozen to the spot, not ex- having expected that to happen. Um, she's going to just call to Caddo. Caddo, uh, make it silent. Okay. And that's all she can do on her turn. Okay, Ogva. Hello. Hi. As you stand there, you're by the you're by the chess table. You've probably been expecting pieces. You you see you see Kewin go over. He bends down and begins to tie the rope around. You're watching this happen. And you see Kewin launched backwards, landing on his back on the rug. Oh well, that's not a good thing, is it? What are you doing? Um. <sighs> What's the suit of armor done? Is it? Does it look as though it's still? Is it still in like an aggressive stance, or is it? Just standing. At this point, it has, as he's touched its legs, 
this sword which he's been holding in this two-handed grip in front of it, this very traditional kind of pose which you see armors like posed in its sword has taken the one hand and with a backhand it has swung the sword upwards with the flat of the blade it has hit Kewin in the chest and launched him backwards so it stood there you can see this kind of almost this movement of its chest plate almost like this breathing very rhythmical movement and its sword is still raised up in the air and it's it's about mid chest height raised blade pointing at Kewin it looks like it could just dive down with its sword uh, Ogvar will move forward and Attempt to drag Q in backwards out of the way. Okay. So you move forward, you grab Q in, and you attempt to drag him backwards. Yes. Okay. This movement will provoke an attack of opportunity. So the armour is going to attempt, as Ogvar drags you back, Q in, it is going to attempt to bring down its sword into your body. You can make me a dexterity saving throw to try and avoid this. God, let's hope he rolls well and rolls well in both senses. 19. Oh. Yeah. As you are dragged backwards, Kewin, by Ogvar, I mean, imagine Ogvar's kind of put his arms under your, your armpits and, and he's just dragging you backwards. This suit of armour with a kind of, this kind of the sword comes down in this, this still this kind of backhanded grip and plunges into the floor between your legs. Oh, oh, you're... Missing you uh, as, as you're dragged backwards. So Ogvar continues to drag you, but this sword is now buried probably a good inch into this, into this, through the rug and into the floor below. Um, so Ogvar, you were able to drag him back 30 feet. Oh, let's get you back, back on your feet, go in. But you are still prone, you're kind of half propped up now. Okay, that's your full turn, Ogvar. Yes, yeah, say 30 feet, we'd run out of room, wouldn't we? Just as far back He'd as he can. He'd drag him back as far yeah, as yeah. He, he can. He could drag him back, in theory, back to where he originally was. Uh, just depends where... As far as I can get him back, really. Yeah, so I'd... you can drag there him back go. towards the table. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Over there, that's where you'd be. Okay, next up, Kewin. Yeah. It's good. It is going to use your movement to get up. Yep. I'm going to go... I say... Uh, that's not very sporting, is it? Uh, no, kicking a man when he's down, or well, stabbing. And I'm going to get up. Yep. And that's literally all I can do, so... Uh, hold on. you not got any spells you can use? What I might... I am going to cast... I'm going to get up and then cast Divine Favour. Okay, what does Divine Favour do? Uh, it gives me plus one to attack and damage for every three levels. Nice. And it lasts uh, one minute. So that's going to give you a plus two to all of the above yep. for ten rounds. Nice. Okay, so as you watch this suit of armour, its head or its helmet turns. And it's kind of this, this squeezing as its head turns to the right, almost tilted on this very inquisitive angle as it looks at you. Blimey, that's squeakier than yours, Kieran. It pulls its sword from the ground. This big great sword, it pulls from the ground. You hear the wood as it kind of wriggles free. You hear the wood kind of splinter and crackle underneath the floor. As it pulls it free, switches its grip around and strides forwards. <laughs> Ruin that carpet. It moves forwards to you, Alora. Oh, oh dear. Shit. <laughs> Straight to the squidgy one. Oh. Well, guess I'm nearest. And it brings its great sword up, <laughs> joining its left hand with the right hand around the hilt, as it brings a sweeping blow downwards. Will twelve hit you? Um, God, I hope no. No. Yeah. So it brings this sweeping blow down. This great sword is very, it's, it's a long great sword. It's, a, it's massive. Uh, and the great sword carves a wide arc into the floor at your feet. This, this wide score mark of fresh wood, which contrasts with the polished surface. As you're able to just kind of whoa, 
dodge backwards. It just, you know, it's literally an inch in front of your toes. Yeah, Laura's going to let out a squeal. Yeah. If you have long toenails, they're now trimmed. Mm. Mm. Yep. Okay, Caddo, you're up. How did we leave the chessboard? In its original position. Yeah, we tried to slide it back to... So the door's closed, Mm -hmm. and it's no longer checkmate. So we have to make the assumption that this thing's now animate because we touched it as opposed to what we've done with the chess set. Yep. On the basis that what I'm looking at here is basically its right kneecap. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, now will it fights on one leg. So what are you doing, Caddo? Well, I reckon if I move forward, am I flanking it if I move forward? Mm. Well, he's direct line for me. Yeah, you'll flank it, yeah. So you're actually behind it now. Well, kind of, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and take out the back of its right knee, I think. Okay. If, if I aim that specifically... You'll get a minus two on your attack roll because you're aiming for a specific point. Which cancels out the flanking bit. Yeah, basically. Hmm. Well, I'm already plus two anyway, aren't I? Go on, let's see if we can take out it right at the back of its right knee. Okay. With a morning star. Hits. With a morning star. Mm, no. I, I, I'm going to assume a nine isn't going to do it a lot of damage. No, a nine isn't going to do it. Oh, your, well. With your morning star, as you go to take this hit, it, the, this, this arm almost seemingly sensing you're behind it bends its knee dips the knee so your morning star whistles in between the gap between the back of its thigh and its calf where, where it would be and, and your morning star just whiffs through okay you doing anything else uh, you've moved taken an action no no i think that's enough for me so next up is esther Esther is stood on the other side of the fireplace. She's next to Axum's desk. And she's, oh, oh no, oh dear, oh dear, what's, oh dear me. Uh, And she will move towards the bookcase on the other side of the room. So she'll move 30 foot diagonally, um, just trying to get to a better position so she's not pinned against the table. So over towards that. Yeah, so she'll cut in front of you, Kieran, and she'll move across the room as far as she can towards the window, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And she'll draw her blade and she'll just stand ready. Elora, top of the round, your turn. Well, her brain's spinning furiously. She really wants to cast Grease, but unfortunately Caddo is stood there, so she's not going to do that. She's going to cast Mage Armour on herself. It lasts for seven hours for her, uh, and it provides her a plus four armour bonus to AC. Okay. It's standard action, sorry. It's just standard action, yeah. Yeah, okay, so you will provoke an attack opportunity for doing that. Okay, well, I'll take a five foot step to the one side and, and then cast. And cast. Okay, so you move, you kind of, you dodge backwards and, and you cast a spell on yourself. And you will see around Laura this kind of um, very faint, almost floating invisible armour appears before sinking into her skin. Mm-hmm. Okay, Ogvar. Hello. You're next. Okay, um, yeah, so I would like to um, move towards uh, towards the bookcase. Yeah, so up to the side of q in really, um, and then release a arrow towards said suit of armour. Okay, roll to hit. Okay, um, do I get flanking on that? Yes, you will get flanking on that. Okay, nice. 23. Yeah, 23 is going to hit. Roll your damage. Okay, and I'm going to use my skirmish feet to add the extra d6. Yep. So that's going to be 9... 11 points of damage. 11 points of damage. Okay, nice. As you lease this arrow, Ogvar, it flies true, clipping the armour inside of the helm. And you see as it impacts, it leaves a slight dent in the armour, um, kind of just along the bottom of where the helm would be, along where the jawline theoretically would be. It leaves this dink and you hear the kind of ting as your arrow then bounces off and lands and rolls on the floor towards the window at the end of the room. Um, Had this been, you would be able to tell, had this been an opponent made of flesh and blood, this would be some significant damage, but as it is, the armour looks unbothered 
it hasn't cocked its head, it hasn't looked at you, it hasn't turned to acknowledge this damage that you've just dealt to it. You doing anything else on your turn? Um, I'll just shout to the guys, but it looks like uh, blunt force and and uh, melee weapons are probably not going to be the best uh, tactic here. Okay. Cumin. Uh, I'm up. about, what, ten foot? You're yeah. about ten foot. No, foot it's yeah. definitely not an evil creature, it's just an animated creature. Yeah, it's you can't just, get you don't get any sense of evil right. off it. It is just a purely so, animated object. Uh, I'm going to charge. I've still got flanking. Yep. Right. Okay. So you're charging up. You get your plus two for charge, plus two for flank, plus That's two on the attack. nineteen plus whatever I roll. Yep. Okay. That's twenty-two. Twenty-two is gonna hit. Yep. Nice. And that uh, roll plus five. So that's 11 points of damage. Okay, nice. 11 points of damage. Yeah, so you charge up to this armour queue and it is, it is massive. It looms over you and it's actually quite a dazzling piece. Uh, looking at it objectively, it's a gorgeous piece of art. Um, clearly some, some time has been put into crafting this armour. It is, you would assume, a purely decorative piece. Uh, it's got all sorts of beautiful metalwork and inlays and, and this beautiful finish and it's polished to a high shine. Um, so as a display piece, it's gorgeous. But you charge up to it and you, you're you using your sword? I'm using my bastard sword. Your bastard yeah. sword, yep. You take a swipe at it and it is hard. It is hard as rock. Your blade smashes into it. And you get this reverberation up the, up the sword where you get this kind of this feel of metal clashing against metal. You get reverberation. Um, and you see that where your sword has landed, there is a, a very clear dent, um, it's a slight indent where your sword is struck, made very obvious by the kind of light and the ambience of this room, the, the, the candle lights, the candles which are lit. You can see very clearly that this armour is now slightly warped. But as with Ogfar, you, you you know that had that blow landed on a creature or a human, it would have dealt some severe damage. But as it is, the armour doesn't seem to be swayed or anything. It doesn't seem to recognise or, you know, show any recognition that it's felt this blow. Okay. Okay. So, the armour is up next. Its head creaks towards you, Kieran. I mean, this and it raises, it, its sword is now to its right, both hands on it where it's just taken a swipe at Allura. And you see it, its, uh, its body tilts down as it brings the sword up in a sweeping arc once more. And will A11 hit you? Nope. No. So you're able to dance out of the way of this blade as it sings through the air. And again, you're able to see this blade is incredibly beautiful. Uh, it's, it's got this beautiful, it's got a beautifully honed edge and it's got this gorgeous inlay down the tang which is, it's, it's a work of art and coming from someone who appreciates their sword work like you do, you tell this is a beautiful, beautiful blade. Um, but yeah, the... You wouldn't want to enjoy it that close up there, would you? Not particularly, no. It whistles through the air past you and you get this sudden feeling as it, this armour takes a step forward with the swing and it stumbles and its body turns to the left as the, as the blade comes back down. It's got very robotic movements, it's not, they're not smooth, they're not natural, it's quite halting, they're very almost preset and pre-programmed moves, they're, it, it's just this sense of, it's just so inorganic. Okay, Caddo, you're up next, what are you doing? I still quite fancy trying this right knee. You gonna go for it again? Yeah. Okay, so again with the minus two to hit it, but you have got the plus two for flanking. Yeah, that's not gonna do much better either, is it? Because that's only uh, that's uh, ten this time. Yeah, again, you go to you go to so what, what's your attack with a modest target. Uh you <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> It's not, it's 15. <laughs> 15. I'm half asleep over it. <laughs> 15. It's probably still not good enough, but there you go. Yeah. You you take this blow again. As it as it brings this 
as it brings this movement and it comes back down with the bastard sword and this follow through movement, you take a swipe and it, it just, it, as it moves, you just miss it. Your, your Morning Star once again goes in between the gap between the back of its thigh and its calf and you get the whoosh as it goes past. Okay. Esther is up next. Go, Esther. Esther will <laughs> dart forwards with her sword drawn. Oh, we've got the fucking thing surrounded now. And she just about hits it as her sword clips it, dealing nine points. And again, you see the same kind of effect where her blade leaves a scratch on the surface of this armour but doesn't seem to have any significant impact. She'll take a five step back towards the far end of the room. Um, she's creating herself some breathing room, so towards that far window she'll take a five step back and she dances out of the way. Um, but you can all tell that, again, there's this, you just look at it, you're like, it's just scratched the surface of the arm. It hasn't dealt any damage, it hasn't rent it. It's, it's, it's insignificant, it's surface damage. Okay, so top of the round, Alora, what are you doing? Right, Alora is going to come back through the gap towards the fireplace, back there towards in the gap between Kewin and the fireplace, yeah. and she's going to turn so she can still see. So, are you moving through that gap past she's, it? No, or? she's just moving into the gap. So, you're moving five foot? Yeah. Five foot, okay. Yeah. So, the suit of armour is in, directly in front of her and facing her. And everybody else is basically in a circle, mostly five foot circle around it. With that, she is going to cast a lightning bolt directly onto this thing. Okay, is that a standard action? It is a standard action, So that's yes. going to provoke an attack of opportunity. She's going to do it. Okay, so provoking its attack of opportunity. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> okay, with a 19. It hits the critical threat range, so I'm going to roll to confirm the crit. It, it was a... Uh, Four, will a 14 hit you? No. Okay, so it doesn't confirm the critical. Hey. <laughs> you might survive this. <laughs> okay, and as you take a step into the gap and you begin to move your arms to start casting, Head, its head just snaps to look at you. This horrible squeal as it as it snaps to look at you. And with its blade, it brings its blade upwards, <coughs> catching you on the inner inner bicep of your outstretched right arm as you're moving your hands to cast. And it leaves a quite significant cut, dealing you 14 points of damage. Ouch. And I believe that nullifies your spell as well. Uh, it's a concentration check for you. Yep. Oh, bloody hell. DC 10, plus the amount of damage you took, so that's 14, plus 24. the spell level. So what level spell is it? Uh, three. So that's 27. Take away your concentration score, and that's your concentration check to see if you can keep doing your spell. Okay. Right, so you've got to score an 18 then. Yeah. To make your so spell you've got work. a DC 18, so make me a concentration check. Uh. Right. What ability do you add to that? Oh, it's a natural to yes. me! <laughs> <laughs> the spell works then. <laughs> no, Laura. So okay. She, you're still casting the law. <laughs> She's still casting the spell. Uh, okay, oh, so. Fuck you, armor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Episode, look, look at the spikes of all that. <laughs> this episode is not for under 18s. <laughs> <laughs> if there was a time to pull one Okay, out, so but... make me roll the damage on that spell. Roll the damage. That'll be 7d6. Can everyone throw wow. me some d6s, please? Yeah. How many do you need? Three more there. Oh, there's three. One more. Need one more. Thank you very much, people. Okay. Come on, make it good. Can you take that podcast? Do not get seven ones now. Really? <laughs> yeah, probably. Four. Oh. Oh. Three sixes in there. That's Some 18, serious maths going on now. 20, 22, 23. That's 24 points of damage. 24 points of damage. Very nice. Yes. Wow. And she's, she's, <laughs> she's like, come on, Sparky, do your best. Sparky. Yeah, so even though you sustain this, this quite, um, quite, it's not an insignificant wound to your arm, um, you, 
are able to cast this spell, and it's almost as, as the instant you cast a spell, you receive this wound. Is what is it? Is it a bolt? Is it? It's a bolt. It's a lightning bolt. Yeah. Yeah. The bolt flies forward. And it hasn't got far to fly, and it strikes the armor. And all of you witness this kind of. Um, it is like a flash of lightning filling the room as this spell makes contact with the armor and the surface of this armor. And you all see the lightning dance around over o- over its form, kind of arcing from its pauldrons to its chest to its, its breastplate, down around its greaves, and, and just just you see this kind of fizzling, and you smell the ozone and the kind of almost like a, a slight burnt sense, burnt smell in the air as this lightning crackles and dissipates off this armor. And you can see that points where this armour has kind of arced and made contact on the surface. The surface of this armour has now been tarnished. There's kind of blackened soot marks and tarnish marks dancing all over this armour. Uh, and you can almost see parts of it where this it's obviously it's made this silver metal. But parts of it have also like anodized so that you've got these, these kind of areas which are this like myriad of rainbow colours across the breastplate now. Uh, and it's this very random pattern. Um, and it's quite the impressive light show, uh, but it dissipates fairly quickly. And the armor kind of you, you must see it kind of judder slightly, and as as this effect happens. Um, so Ogvar, you're up next. Um, okay, so Ogvar's thinking he's not going to be much use with his uh, with his arrows, so he's going to dart back across the room uh, towards the chest set. Uh, and taking a, a wild stab at it, shouts as he's going, The Knights of the Horses, right? Yes. So, at that, I'm trying to think now. So, we were playing white pieces, and we moved. Did we move the white rook? Yeah, you we moved the white rook. Yeah, to so, if there's any mate. black knights, he wants to tip them over. Okay, yep. Yeah, you were able to get up to the chessboard, and you're able to tip. The piece is over. I, do you take like just a wild flail, or do you no, no, just, just yeah, deliberately just just the horses. Yeah, you knock them over, and they there's no effect. Okay. The pieces. It was worth a try. The pieces knock over, and you see they've got this kind of um, a red felt bottom on the pieces, and you see them fall over. Um, but there's there's no visible effect. You don't hear anything. You don't sense anything, and the armor behind you certainly does not stop moving. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so next up we have Q in. Two attacks. Two attacks for round, go. So you get flanking, you also get the effect from Basically Divine I'm Favour and Bless. Oh, did, oh, it? I, did it turn back towards Alora again then, didn't it? For its attack of opportunity, I assume. Yes, it turned back to Alora. Yeah, I'm so seventeen and twelve. You're seventeen twelve. Okay, roll to hit. So roll to hit twice. 21. 21 will hit. Nice. And 21. And 21 will hit Nine again. 12. And 4 and 17. <laughs> nice. Okay, so roll some damage for me. Make it good. Right, so that's. F- I'm so excited. I'm good at snooze. 5. <laughs> it's all that ozone in the air. 12 first. 12 first. The smell nice. of burning metal. And 15 seconds. <laughs> Two, excuse me. Uh. <clears throat> and was it twelve? So what was the second one? Fifteen. Fifteen. Nice. Panic. I'm all good. Twelve and fifteen. It's just all the ozone in here. <laughs> okay, so yeah, Kieran, as you're stood there, the armor it's it's stretched outwards, obviously to to clip Alora, and you've got the sword. It's raised above its its head in the air, and you you smash into it. I'm assuming you're probably going to go for like main mass torso area. Yeah, I'd, I'd be. Yeah. One, two, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So you come from the the right hand side, and you go back to the left, and you leave two big dents in its side, um, in its uh, one in its kind of back area, one in its lower abdomen, and yeah, you see these dents, and they form, and it's it's they're quite deep dents you've left. They're quite a deep impression, but again, you've got this feeling it's not as much damage as it could have been had it been something organic. It's all good, guys. Kieran's got his eye in now. Come on, let's do this. Yep. Okay, you doing anything else, Kieran? Saying anything or...? Uh, take that, you you blinder. <laughs> okay. 
So, with that, the armor is up next. And then Laura, it's focused on you. It, it is <laughs> massive. You are, Surprise. how tall are you, Laura? You are five foot something? I am five foot six, I believe. Five foot six. This armor is eight foot tall. Which is it, about five yeah. foot five to I at the minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 This armor looms over the top of you, casting you in shadow. And it is, it, it, it is imposing. Um, I'd like to roll up in a ball on the floor, but... <laughs> <laughs> And it brings its sword down. And it misses you entirely. Oh, thank mm. God for that. And its sword comes down and buries halfway up the blade into the floor. It's doing a lot of damage to the floor. And it, it tries, you see it, pull on the blade. The blade is wedged solid. Yes. Yes. Now's our opportunity. Come on, guys. Caddo, you're up next. What are you doing? Well, this back of the knee shit's not working, is it? <laughs> Mind you, I've been out. If it's the first uh, one, first might have hit. No, 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 because I scored, I scored less on the roll on the first one. So, <laughs> oh, although I completely forgot to add anything to it, uh, I got less than it. I think it's time. Uh, having seen electricity work, I think it's time to play with some electricity. So I'm going to step back five feet. Okay. Because that's okay, isn't it? Yep, you can do five doing. foot step back. Uh, and then I think it's time that uh, the ring of the shadow storm started getting involved. Uh, so, okay. uh, a small burst of lightning. Uh, it does damage to me, but who cares? Uh, it immediately does damage to my target, so... Okay, so... I don't have the uh, effects here. I've got it, it's 1d20. Okay, so you roll 1d20. That'll be 18 points of damage. Wow! The, uh... If only you could do that when you're attacking. <laughs> well, I'd rather do it immediately as damage without any faffing about. <laughs> okay. So that's uh, 18 points of electrical damage to it. I've, I've got to damage myself now. D20's a damage roll. Oh wow. yeah, I'm damaging myself now as well. Oh right, okay. So we want this one to be, oh that's not too bad. So I've done myself four points of damage. Yeah, okay, that's so fair you fling, I'm seeing you kind of fling your hand out, you're pointing at this, this armour, and this ring on your finger, this incredibly cold ring which makes your hand numb and tingles, you get this very kind of this crackling sense, it's almost like when you've got a limb which has gone to sleep and you begin to move it again, you get this intense bolt of pain. And from your hand, this flash of lightning emanates, again, hitting this armour and dancing around it. It's, it's had less of an impact than Laura's spell did, but you still see these very thin tendrils of lightning striking and leaving um, a spider, like a, co- like a spider web, a cobweb of um, tarnished marks along the back of this armour. Uh, but again, you get this bolting pain, like a limb coming back alive, and it, it, you get this kind of this almost this ah, is like a kickback. A kickback, yeah. yeah. Don't mind it. that. What's the activate? How does that work with activation? I literally just point the ring at whatever I'm aiming at. So is it? But is it like a psychic thing? Is it? Is it? No, he just just oh, okay. points oh. at it. Just okay. moves his hand, points at it with the ring, and he will cat. It will I have. Hope you don't do that effect. when he points at something on his dinner then. <laughs> It, it is it is an intent fired thing. It's not just if you randomly like wave at a friend. Oh, sorry, electrocuted you. Cook your own. Just take some yeah. raw chicken. Oh. I do have to think about it, but it's quite a handy bit of kit because I can do that twice an hour. That's mad. Right. Nice. Okay. okay. And just for notes, I'm going to be doing it again. <laughs> if it's still standing. That'll be the two goes for this hour, and then if it's still hour uh, standing up in an hour's time, I suspect we won't be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Esther is up next. She goes, oh, well, um, huh, huh, it's, it's certainly sparkly. And she dives back in. Uh, so she's going to dive, charge forwards again. Uh, she's going to try I mean, and she's into it. the back of it now. She's going to try and hit it. She's plus two flanking, plus two for charging, plus, plus two four. from me. So that's plus six. Then, plus basically. two to attack from me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, Esther's on one. She's just rolled a 19. Ooh. Nice. Uh, Ooh. That That's critical range, isn't it? Uh, a for a range. long sword, yes. So ah. she's going to roll to confirm critical. Oh, plus six. Oh. And with a plus six, eight, plus 12, so <laughs> 20. <for> she's <laughs> confirmed the critical. Oh, good old Esther. Nice, nice. Go, Esther. Yeah. Okay, so she will get a full d 8 worth of damage, so full eight points. Plus. 2, 10, 
11, 12, 13, 14. So Rest will deal 14 points of damage. But again, you get this, you see her dive in and she deals this absolutely smashing blow. And it would have, you you know, it would have been uh, quite a threatening blow on a humanoid opponent or a non non-organic opponent as it is she leaves a horrifying looking scratch down the back of this armor and you can see almost like her blade has slid through it like butter um this this gash is probably about a centimeter deep it is a big big gash but again there's no sense of there's no reaction from the armor it doesn't have any sense of pain it's just a, a strong blow um okay so, you may need to retcon something here. There is a reflex saving throw for that lightning bolt. Is there? Yes. You'd have to okay. throw 17 for half damage. 17, so 17. I'll, that. Okay, I'll, I'll throw that now. Yeah. That's, it's not going to make it anyway. Fine. Right. Cool. Okay, no. So, yeah, you no. Just ignore it. Retcon, got no it it's, yeah, no, that reflex save it didn't make it. So the damage damage stands. Okay, okay cool. Just remember that next time. I, I use will. It. I'm looking at that now. <laughs> okay, so Elora, you're up next. Well, I think we know what's coming next. She's going to have another crack. She liked the effect on that lightning bolt, and she's on a high because she felt that she did something. Well, she did a thing. She did a thing. She did. A you thing. did a thing. Okay, so you're going to go for it again. Yeah. So she's like, yep. So okay, guys, incoming. And she's going to cast, attempt to cast another lightning bolt. And this time there is a reset, a reflex saving throw. Does the 17 hit you? 17, no it doesn't. Okay. So, no, because she cast mage arm on herself. Nice. Well actually Good. no, sorry, I'll wreck on that myself. It can't hit you anyway. Oh. Because its sword is stuck in the ground. Ah, okay. So, okay. sorry, ignore that. Okay, so you throw your lightning bolt. Uh, yeah, throw my right. lightning okay, bolt. Okay, so it's going to make a reflex save. The 20, it makes the save. Okay, so it'd be half damage. So half damage, okay. A load of d6s, everybody again. I really should put Mattering some. of d6s. Thank you. Okay, so 7 d6. Uh, so, 4, 8, 12, 15. 17, 18, 19 points halved. 19 points halved, nine. so. Take it down, don't you? Uh, yeah, it goes yeah. down. Yeah. So, nine. Nine points of damage. Okay. So, you throw this lightning bolt, and seemingly having learned from the last bolt you threw, it ducks. And for such a big armour, it is incredibly quick to drop itself low and avoid the bolt you it's still you know you still get this slight arcing as the bolt passes over it and dissipates you get this slighter arcing as it catches kind of its top of its helm and it's got this very decorative kind of feathery plume on the top of its <laughs> helm which immediately catches fire <laughs> um, it's, it's, a very, it's a kind of this black and purple plume and it immediately catches fire um, but Ooh, you look at Birdman go. That is quite literally the only damage that happens. You, you might see like a kind of a small tarnished spot on the top of its head, like someone's balding. But other than that, there's no real damage dealt, and it's dropped down and, and ducked out of the way of your blow. Laura's gonna go. Ha ha ha! Yeah, your head's on fire, dude. Okay, over. Okay, is it stood up or is it? Crouched down, or what's it doing? It's it's crouched down to duck, and it's come back up. It's back up, it's so it's back, back to eight it's foot back tall. It's back up to eight foot tall. Okay, um, so Ogvar's looking at it and noticing it's moving its head around. So he's going to assume that it might have some sort of vision. Um, it's an assumption. So he's going to run across the room, pick up a bit of speed. He wants to try use his boots of leap of faith. I thought he was going to pick up a bit of speed. I was going to say, what kind of podcast is this? <laughs> so, yeah, he's going to try and use a leap of faith boots to get up towards its its head height and try and unattach the helmet from the set of armour and 
if possible, lob it out the window. <laughs> what, are you going to pull the helmet off? I think you heard it. There's a bit of a theme going on here with Ogvar and inanimate objects, isn't there? So you can run up, you can activate your boots, you can leap straight over the top of Kewin. How are you attempting to move remove this helmet? Are you trying to kick it off its head? Are you trying to jump on it? And oh, come on, drop, oh, yeah, I'm trying to window. jump on it. <laughs> and if there's any hooks or anything, I'll try and just remove the helmet. Okay. I, I don't know what's attached to the rest. I didn't know whether there's anything inside the suit or whether it is just magically animated. I'm not sure. Okay, so you are able to jump onto its shoulders. Make me... <sighs> it's gonna have to be an opposed grapple check. Ooh. Oh, I thought she was gonna say a contested strength check. <laughs> so, oh, what am I rolling here then? D20 plus oh. grapple? Sure, so, lovely, you need to make me a grapple check, please. Ogvar. Okay, so that's D20 plus my grapple. Is that plus, plus anything from B- Bless or Prayer? Uh, plus two, isn't it? Still, it's still yes, going. It's still it still an counts attack. as an attack. Yeah, so you will get plus. Plus two, two in all. Plus two. Plus two. Plus two in total from that. Yeah. So, grapple plus two plus dice roll. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 14 plus seven plus two. 20, so 21, 22, 23. 23, okay. So, the next thing to do is <coughs> the suit of armour is going to make an attack of opportunity. If it deals any damage, your attempt will fail. What's it going to attack with? It's with bare, it's bare oh. hands, I suppose. <laughs> I was going to take a hand off the... Right, okay. Unarmed. We're into unarmed combat. Uh, fisticuffs. Do I suppose an 11 will hit you? It doesn't. <laughs> okay. It looks really smug. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing things. <laughs> <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it might be no use whatsoever. Well, we're just going to end up fighting a headless you got less to hit. Yeah, at least I'd be seven foot tall now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, hitting, I'm hitting major mass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then it is going to attempt to grapple you in return. No. So. So, you are able to successfully grapple this armour. You've got a hold of it, and you're going to attempt to pull its helmet off. Yes. Make me a strength check. Okay. Ah, that's not so good. That's five. <laughs> yeah, no. You attempt to wrench its helmet off, only to realise that the helmet isn't attached to anything. It is connected via, you would assume, a magical force to the rest of the suit of armour. Okay. Um, but you know you're able to kind of wiggle it a bit upwards and down and side to side and you kind of stood there with your feet planted on its pauldrons kind of with all your strength trying to pull upwards but aside from you know very minuscule movement perhaps an inch in any any direction you are not able to pull its helmet off Ogva have you lost your head? No I was trying to make him lose his but it's not going well and that is the end of your turn so you will finish your turn stood on top of the armour Do I not get to use my Second attack, or is that full round action for a grapple? A grapple is a Okay, that's fine, yeah. Okay, so Kewin, you're up next. <laughs> right, so he's got, he's right in the, the top of the. Uh, he's standing on his he's shoulders. He's got his, his feet. Pulling so, up the helmet. Yeah, he's kind of so doing squats on his head. Basically, what I'm getting at is not in my way to me. It's eight foot tall, no. Okay. <laughs> I'll in fact, probably if anything, it looks foot. like he's trying to squat. You're not going to guess what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to resort. Use a spell. <laughs> I'm going to resort to usual, and I'm, I'm going to attack it till it dies. Just so keep that's... biffing it. Okay. Seventeen and twelve. Where was it? I'm just going to write down Q in biffs it again. Seventeen and twelve. Copy and paste. <laughs> so seventeen makes it plus five is twenty-two. Hits. 15 and 12 makes 27. <laughs> it's not going to be this, is it? So roll your damage. <laughs> so that's 4 and 5 is 9. Okay. And 7 and 5 is 12. <laughs> that's a very cheesy bit you've got over okay. there. <laughs> yeah, so you deal these two blows, and Ogvar, you're kind of wobbling around on top of it as is, is you, you can feel the blow's impact on this armour. Yeehaw! 
Um, and yeah, I mean, Kieran, you see these two blows land, and you are starting to kind of make a fairly decent dent in the side of this armour. Um, you are targeting the areas that you've hit before, you can see these dents becoming bigger, and the armour starting to kind of buckle upwards at kind of like the hip joint, where you're obviously forcing it inwards and the armour's like leveraging upwards. Um, so you are starting to see this kind of uh, actual damage being done now. Okay, the armour is up next. Ogvar. Hello! Make me a contested grapple check, please. Ooh. So the same rules as before. Do I get still get the plus two? Yep. Yep. Okay, cool. Eighteen. Thirty-three. Wow. <laughs> okay, so with a thirty-three, all of you kind of just stand there and watch as the armor raises both hands above its head, grabs hold of your torso, Ogvar, crushing your arms into your side. Oh dear. And then it throws you. And Where? It, th <laughs> it throws you. It's going to make a strength check. Allura draws breath. Natural <gasps> 20. Oh, I would. Plus 5. 25 oh. on the strength check. Allura gasps. Ogvar, you are thrown into the stone wall. <gasps> oh, which way? Better than out the window. Uh, so, kind of by the cabinet area. He'll probably hit above the window. No, no, cabinet. Oh, that cabinet. Yeah, so it's facing that way. Yeah. So you will probably crash into. Actually. Have I got time to make a reflex save? Or a tumble check? Oh, but well, you can't tumble. Well, I've, I've got one more use position. left in my leap of faith boot, so I'm hoping if I could get my feet first, I could sort of run out of it. Does he stand like the Rio statue? On High or low? Hill with a glow around him going, oh, no. as he goes. No. High or low? This is very important. High or low? I think that's a call. You no, you're, you're, you're being asked. I'm being asked. No, no, no. Oh, fuck. Oh. 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 No, high or low? Uh, we'll go high. Okay. High, you're going out the window. Oh, no, oh nice. No. 78. Oh. You're going hey. out the window. Oh, no. Head first or feet first? He's been defenestrated. Head first. You are going through the window head first. Laura's going to say, oh, I know of a spell called defenestration. Shit, you all will... just gone out the window. You will take 2d6 damage as you crash through the panes of glass. Oh, then there's falling damage. Oh, my God. And, and guards in the garden who might see him. You take eight points of damage. Total or is that plus to two as well? You said two for going through the window. No, no, no. So, that's, so 2d6, I said, sorry. Oh, sorry, 2d6. So you take eight points of damage as you go through the window and you are thrown. Okay. Maths, maths, maths. So let's see. So D6 of damage per 10 foot of height. Yeah, one D6 for 10 foot. We're on the second this floor. This is quite a big, you're on the second floor. <laughs> no, we're not, we're on the third floor because the basement's a floor. Yes. <laughs> oh. there, is, there is the balcony below. There is the um, the terrace below. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. However, the terrace is only... It's with a 25. The terrace is only about 15 foot wide. Yeah, but then again, the, the actual what terrace? The, the crash that window, though, of going it? through the window, he gone out that window? Yeah, would stop oh, that bit of terrace. the projection going through there because he's hit the window. Probably. He's so going to be slow only the falling. Projection, yeah, yeah. He, you, you, would, you would probably not miss the, the, the terrace. It's oh, still going to be thoughts. about 3d6 worth of falling damage. Can I not use my leap of faith boots to make three steps to sort of like blum, 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 slow my fall down? You can if you want. It's the last charge I've got today, so I'll, that's what I'd like to do. Or even just to hold on to the window. <laughs> what? In the feet? No. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. Grab I'm going head window. first, aren't I? So, so make me a reflex save, Ogbar. Reflex, yeah. Pl 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 plus, plus one. one. Be 20. 20. Okay. With a, with a 20, you are able to slow your descent down to the point where you only take a d6 worth of damage and it's a full six points of damage okay, so as you reach the floor. So this is probably more, you're able to activate your boots but you are still going to have a bit of momentum, you're still probably going to fall to the floor quite heavily mm -hmm. um, and you are now outside on the terrace. Okay. Let's see. This one plus zero. This one plus one. 
as you crash down to the ground, Ogfar, you land heavily, and you hear a noise. What kind of noise? You hear a very tired, grumpy sounding. What was that? Okay. So, next up we have Kado, your turn. You've just witnessed, from the angle you're at, you you are staring directly up at Ogvar's arse. Um, well, I was. As he's squatting <laughs> over. You've witnessed this suit of armour lob Ogvar headfirst to the, op- the, the diagonally opposing window. Mm. And you've seen Ogvar disappear feet first out the window. Out the window, yeah. What are you doing? It's exciting stuff, this, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I'm bloody... I'm... Uh, oh, at least he's not stood on it anymore, I suppose. So if I lightning bolt it, at least it won't go up through his legs anymore. I was, I was slightly worried that I was going to electrofly you. <laughs> but I'm not anymore. Did so, you just say e- electrofly? Electrofly, <laughs> yeah. I already did the flying bit just. <laughs> electrofly is where he leaps off through shot. Um, okay. We're going to electrocute it again. Okay, so roll your d20. Come on, let's get something good. Oh, 17. Reroll that, that's cocked. Oh, it's not a little That thing. is cocked, reroll it. <laughs> oh, that's harsh. That's harsh, that, isn't it? Keep your dice in the dice tray then. I'll have an 18 then. <laughs> See, we're better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and oh, and I take six. Okay. Okay, so you point again, you get this feeling, this, this kind of tingling where the pain you pre- you've experienced previously has almost abated. But you're back to this kind of pins and needles feeling in your hand. Again, you you point at this suit of armour and this blast of lightning emanates from your hand. Um, and you see it again kind of dance over its back and leave these kind of scorch marks. And it's almost got this very inter- interesting patina, this interesting like kind of tarnishing pattern across its back now where you've been you've been throwing your lightning at it but again you get this bolt of searing pain like a limb coming back alive if you've been you know leaning on it for too long you get this travel up through your arm it's it hurts um and you you almost feel you can smell the ozone and uh, probably on the back of your hand where you might have like a smattering of hair across your knuckles and at your wrist you begin to notice that the hair is actually singed away good we like a bit of hair singy won't need to get any beat when you go to town <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Esther. Uh, sorry, Cad, are you doing anything else? That's it, that's, that's... Okay. Right. Esther, seeing Ogvar throw it in window. We're going, oh! Oh! Ogvar! Oh! <laughs> and she will leave the fight. Uh, the armour will have an attack of opportunity. Uh, which well, it is going thing. to... It is going to hit her with that. Uh, dealing five points of damage, no, f- uh, ten points of damage to Esther as she runs past. Um, so I got a sword. Is it? What's it done? It was only a fist. It's it's cuffed with a fist. Um, so as she's run past, the armor's arms flailed out, and it's it's probably caught Esther along the cheek, um, and you can see as she runs past you, and you can see even for that kind of like a. A slight <coughs> cut with blood trickling down. You can tell it's going to bruise something horrible. Um, but as she's been cuffed across the face, she doesn't appear to show any kind of reaction to being hit. It's she just brushes it off and carries on, and she runs to the window and looks down and goes, oh, I'll, I'll, "I'll be back in a minute, dearies," and then jumps out of the window oh <laughs> after you, Ogva. Um, so I'll just dust myself down and then. It- and then an Esther lands on me. <laughs> She's going to make a tumble check to try and half the damage. I think she yeah. Um She's not going to successfully do that. Eight. And she takes a further eight points of damage as she kind of vaults herself out the window and slides down the wall um, to meet you on the ground. And Ogvar, looking up, you see her kind of fling herself out the window. And it's just like... It is marginally terrifying watching this this uh, elderly woman <laughs> just uh, she just she just goes for it she just jumps out the window and you see her kind of uh, she's got her arm braced against the wall and she slows her fall down as much as she can she still lands quite heavily on the bottom and you can see her arms the, the clothes her her guard's uniform is now ripped on her arm and she's got these very nasty like this kind of almost like a road rash graze along her arm where she's tried to slow herself down. Uh, but she's very quickly spring back up and she's going, 
Hello, Wokva. You all right, dearie? Uh, yes, uh, yes. Excellent. That was quick. <laughs> okay. So, next up, Elora, top of the round. As the opening credits rolled, so had the companions, and combat had commenced. With sorcerers weighing up the odds, it was a case of fortune favouring the brave, as an electrically charged Alora kept her concentration and dished out the damage. Caddo's attempt at nobbling a knee had totally, and repeatedly, missed the mark, causing a tactical turnaround as he triggered an alternative assault on the animated armour. Meanwhile, in a moment of madness, to outclass his opponent, Ogvar pulled off a parkour-style performance which promised so much, but sadly delivered little more than a somewhat shocking dose of defenestration. Esther unexpectedly made an energetic exit after our rodeo ranger, rapidly descending out into the darkness beyond the now absent aperture. In a slightly sticky situation, and with two team members down and out, or to be more accurate, out and down, the group must get to grips with the highly polished metal monstrosity and somehow still stay stealthy? But by now, with the raucous racket of combat, their chances of defying detection must surely be dashed. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Having you as a listener means everything to us. So, whichever streaming service you choose to listen to us with, please give us a like, subscribe and follow. We would love for you to join us on our Facebook or Twitter page, where you can catch up with all of our latest news. While you're waiting for the next episode of Secrets of the Silver City, why not pop over to our website, where you can read all of the information about this campaign, from backstories to setting. All of the links are in the bio of this episode. Join us again next week for the next instalment. Thank you for listening.